Hey, this is Paul Brown from Tinkertry.com here on February 24th of 2022 in my home lab. Today was a big day in Intel's world announcing the ZND 1700, also known as the ZND 2700. Those are two series of CPUs announced today that have embedded Ethernet controllers all the way up to 25 gig of speed and a whole lot of other features that have them leapfrog over 2015's Xeon D 1541. That's been super popular with virtualization home lab enthusiasts. So why have you not seen me down here filming too much lately? And that's mostly because there hasn't been a, a new CPU. It's been, ooh, a long time, almost seven years. Now that was the expected product life cycle for Xeon D product family. There were some motherboards that were warranted that long that you could replace them if something bad happened. So there are advantages to having a slow life cycle, but that's how it goes with the ZND world. I think it was worth the wait. This is an unscripted off the cuff video right after hot on the heels of writing an article, um, watching people like Patrick Kennedy's video at Serve the Home. I encourage you to watch that in full and read the article in full with lots of lovely screenshots, including diagrams of how the chipset works and all that great stuff. But I wanna focus mostly on what it could be used for in a home lab and why there are advantages over the ZND 1500. Now the ZND 1500 came out in 2015, shipped in volume in 2016 with the ZND 1541, super popular eight core system that I use to this day. Later, uh, a special 200 unit run was made of the ZND 1567, 12 core unit in a mini tower format, also super popular and sold as bundles from a company called Wired Zone. And those systems, well over a thousand of them in the world, work very well to this day. Very low return rate, things are going great, only folks that had some issues were the Xeon D had a 10 gig chip that had some issues. It could have been thermal, could have been something else. Firmware updates tended to fix it. And that was the super micro world. I also played with Gigabyte. I had a look at, well, the Xeon D. I wrote an article where the Xeon D 1500 proliferated across many different brands. Uh, it tended to be used in edge scenarios. Uh, this could be airplanes or transportation. This could be cell phone towers. Um, the Xeon D 1600, came out, it was really basically 1500, slight refresh, and it was focused on the edge and say telco, um, all right? So was it a surprise when a couple weeks ago we started getting rumors and leaks of the ZND 1700 being primarily focused on the edge? Um, well, no, not at all. Was it a surprise, a nice surprise that the embedded firmware, sorry, the embedded controller in the ZND 1700 and 2700 chipsets has up to 25 gig networking built in. Yeah, I thought maybe they'd go with 10 gig again because they're trying to hit a lower price point than ZNE, but now they did it. Um, that's exciting. Also, two core all the way up to 20 core. That's quite a range there. And 384 gig of RAM all the way up to one terabyte of RAM. So if you're out there waiting eager on your, say, high-end VMware NSX home lab, you might need to gobble up lots of RAM. You might really be uh, starred for RAM. And the ZND2100 didn't really help as much as you maybe hoped, only getting you to 512 gig of RAM, which is pretty pricey, and a lot more heat and noise. So I was never too impressed with the ZNT2100 replaced by the now 2700. I'm always more of a fan of the 1500 now replaced by the ZND1700. So spending money on some interim solution from ZNE with one gig? No. I've got Synology NAS back here with 10 gig. There was really no other option. So it just made sense for me to keep running my ZND 1500 series systems um, to this day, almost seven years later. One of those machines is six years old. The other machine is five years old. All right, so what's next? Well, I don't know what brand uh, will have a form factor that's good for home lab. Let me explain. We don't know if there'll be mini tower. If you think about mini tower, it's mostly about, um, in Supermicro's case anyway, it was 3.5 inch drives. How many people still use those, I'm not sure. I use 18 terabyte drives for daily backups myself. Also, SATA drive bays at 2.5 inch might be a little more practical for your mass storage and backups. And then lots of M.2 NVMe would be really awesome. Um, think of this, you've got PCIe 3.0 uh, preventing you from having um, as much bandwidth to your CPU as possible. Now we've got PCIe 4.0 on the new Xeon D chips uh, that arrived today, or announced today, excuse me. We don't know availability, we don't know pricing. We just know it's quarter one of 2022. But anyhow, imagine having lots of lanes, it means you could have maybe eight NV NVMe slots. Uh, in this case, N.2 gumstick form factor. Uh, wouldn't that be awesome for things like 
VMware vSAN. I got some stickers laying here. Uh, VMware vSAN, you can do NVMe pass through of individual M.2 drives. You can have four copies of VSXI running on one server, pass through NVMe to each one, have another four devices of some sort, maybe SATA, for the capacity tier of vSAN. Now you've got eight storage devices. You can pull them all together. You can have them one as one storage device, one vSAN, an object based data store at incredible speeds. I mean, that's just one kind of niche project. I would say most people don't do vSAN at home for kind of ease of maintenance and shut down and boot up and all that, but for a demo, fantastic. So really promising having a lot more lanes of PCIe coming to the new Xeon D chipsets. I will want to look at watt burn, but so far they're looking good. The, the TDP and the watt, and the watt profile, the um, utilization looks very similar. Look at the article I've written uh, today on the Intel Arc which does not have pricing, but it does have the specs, the feeds, the cores, the watt burn, all of that good stuff, the number of um, lanes. So take a deep dive into the uh, Intel Arc. I even created a link for you that compares the ZND 1541 with the new ones. All right, so yes, looking at the watts will be of interest to me personally. Um, <laughs> when there's a blank back plate on a bare bone system, I actually created a logo, a uh, print shop that's 20 feet that way. Um, with a very carefully, you know, cut sheet here that's actually repositionable. Um, so anyhow, that was kind of fun to provide a little value add to people that uh, want to know what port is what and what's 10 gig versus one gig. Another tool I use is VMUG Advantage. Um, if you spend your 179 uh, a year, if you get a discount code, such as Tinker Try, or if you pay the full 200, either way, you get 365 days of access to almost all the code that VMware makes. This is not a sponsored video, I just want to mention, but all the code that VMware makes and the license keys you need to keep it going for 365 days so you don't have to rebuild it. So that's a super popular thing to not have to worry about 60-day VMware Times bombs from VMware.com downloads. Also, we have VMware vExpert. That's another download. So this little logo signifies someone who's blogged or given back to the community, uh, like myself, since I think it's 2014 or so now. Um, I might have that date wrong, excuse me. But anyhow, uh, you can also download VMware vSphere code from there and get license keys from there as well, um, generally for about a year. Um, so those are just some of the programs that um, I'm stoked to keep on using. And finally, this is just a fun sticker I got, I think at VMworld 2017, something like that. And there's VMware talking about being at the edge. So yes, VMware, ESXi hypervisor running on edge computing devices like Xeon D, 1700. That would ha that's what has me stoked for this year of 2022. Stay tuned for what happens next. I don't know. <laughs> I just know um, I'm trying to stay uh, hardware agnostic, looking at different vendors, platforms if possible, either remotely or in person, who knows. Um, and then, you know, test it, abuse it, um, beat on it, torture test it, heat soak it for a week, running uh, serious CPU workloads, aim my FLIR thermal camera at it, aim my DB meter at it to measure the sound output, all the usual stuff I do here in my home lab to help you, the viewer, become a more informed buyer when the time comes for you to refresh your home lab. And I do have a feeling there's a whole lot of you out there uh, that are interested in moving along for the ZND 1500 series platform, which was popular but limited to 120 gig of RAM, which does limit you these days to the number of VMs you can run. So just imagine having up to a terabyte if you really need it in 20 cores and up to oh, a terabyte of memory if you can afford it, and up to 20 cores to uh, keep all that RAM busy with a whole lot of VMs. It's just pretty pretty stupendous what you can do for somewhere between two to $5,000 these days in a home lab, or in a one uniform fact, if you don't mind whiny tiny fans that spin uh, very quickly and annoy any humans living anywhere near it, well, four nodes of one U, they're already showing up from Supermicro and probably others soon where a tiny 1U, you know, not a full rack mount 1U, uh, could be something you'd look at as well. Uh, who knows? I'm hoping a lot of vendors have supply chains and that they're able to ship in volumes the ND 1700 solutions this year. Even better, and just a little teaser, would be fanless, okay? Now, you might be worried, can you really do a 10 gig uh, phi, the physical interface of 10 gig, and be fanless? Well, if you do it right and have a large heatsink, and I've had a look at some of these devices, well, that could get interesting. So just stay tuned for that. That's my little teaser. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Please consider subscribing. My uh, viewers versus subscribers, my ratio is horrendous. 
If nothing else, at least do a thumbs up. Even better, a comment, but far better if you can subscribe. Um, reply to my tweet today on what you think of the ZND 700 slash 2700 D series. Or finally, leave a comment below my related article, which will be linked to right at the end of this video, as well as in the description section. So thank you. Bye for now. And uh, happy home labbing in 2022 together.